Hello and welcome to the Applied Accelerated Artificial Intelligence course. Uh, I am Satyajit Das, so I'll be uh, handling the introduction to AI systems hardware and system software, and I'll be taking some of the uh, SDKs with uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow. And uh, yeah, so that's about it, and let's get started. So. So these are the contents of uh, today's lecture. So basically we will start with the uh, introduction. Uh, we will uh, see some applications of AI in, uh, in modern days, uh, just to get motivated in the beginning. And then we will uh, talk about the computing systems uh, from the perspective of uh, AI. So from the perspective of running at artificial intelligence benchmarks, what are the modern systems available and how they can scale or, or how we can use them and what are the uh, shortfalls that are there and how we can uh, minimize the gap between the requirements and already available systems. So we will talk about those. And uh, of course, uh, we will uh, talk about some of the computing engines. We might not be covering all the computing engines that are available nowadays, but of course we will try to uh, cover some of these and, and to see uh, of what are the things available uh, nowadays. So, uh, so let's see one application as uh, Amazon Go. So basically this uh, Amazon Go provides you the flexibility to uh, have seamless uh, shopping experience. So you go into one shop and you just take your things and you just get out of of the shop and 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 your, your uh, transaction will be automatically credited and and uh, you will have this uh, seamless shopping experience a lot of ai is uh, applied here we will uh, talk about what kind of algorithms or benchmarks that are being used another application is uh, from this uh, retail clothing scenario so you go into one store and you without any contact you can just try out the clothing for your shapes and sizes uh, that is available so as you can see uh, you can uh, just stand in front of the mirror and you can try out uh, several clothes depending on your uh, requirements and and likings and you can try it out and and you can have uh, uh, bought them as you go so without uh, even going into the trial rooms, you can you can have this seamless experience. Again, another application, uh, of course, is uh, everybody knows uh, nowadays uh, the application of uh, automated cars. So basically, uh, self-driving vehicles. So if you uh, see different applications uh, of computer vision and deep learning, uh, you'll see it is most intense use of artificial intelligence in terms of application nowadays, self-driving cars. Uh, again, you have uh, AI application in the area of uh, medical imaging and automated uh, operations. Uh, so based on the images that are available, you can actually uh, have like which way will be the most efficient and reliable way to go into one tumor that is uh, there inside your brain and, and inside someone's brain and it, it can uh, track that without any uh, uh, invasive, invasive measures, right? So, so these are the applications uh, of AI and there are numerous applications you have heard of. But the main uh, uh, question is what is artificial intelligence and uh, here we have many uh, uh, definitions available but uh, mostly accepted definition was given by uh, John McCarthy in the year of 2004 uh, in one paper published from IBM and it says that it is the science and engineering of making intelligence intelligent machines especially intelligent computer programs. So the programs that are intelligent, that are not, not anymore 
the the rule based or or conventional programming method right and it is related to the similar task of using computers to understand human intelligence okay so that is the main purpose of emulating human human intelligence into the machines through these computer programs or intelligent computer programs but ai does not have to confine itself to methods that are biologically observable of course uh, this is the generic acceptable definition of artificial intelligence but broadly it has evolved uh, vastly from the earlier rule based uh, approach to solve uh, intelligent problems to learning based approaches and these uh, learning based approaches became very very popular with the advancement of uh, new computing uh, systems that are like uh, gpus and and apgs and different systems like that so as i was mentioning that learning based approaches to solve or or to emulate human intelligence into computer programs have been very very popular nowadays and these uh, are mostly widely named as this deep learning and machine learning of course we will use them interchangeably and and it is important to understand the nuances between them okay so uh, deep learning uh, is basically comprising of neural networks which has uh, more than three layers okay three or more layers so it includes the input and output layer as you can see here and deep learning automates this learning process uh, by extracting the features from the data available and that is completely uh, or or mostly automated because this does not need the human intervention as much as the classical machine learning uh, needs uh, that intervention of uh, human dependence right so that is kind of uh difference between these uh, two concepts but again uh, deep learning is uh, uh one subset of machine learning as as you can see here right and now the most important thing is that what kind of computations or uh, uh what kind of complexity these benchmarks have and and if you understand that then it will be very easy to understand what kind of computing systems that that we can engage them for right so the configurations or 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 uh, if you, if you do not understand the complexity of the algorithm it it will be hard to uh, uh, relate to the computing systems that are underlying uh, or, or that will be running your benchmarks right so all these uh, 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 from all these benchmarks that are available in uh, deep deep neural uh, learning that are mostly neural network based uh, benchmarks but they are evolving day by day and and that is mostly because of different algorithmic innovation so every year you can see uh, hundreds thousands of paper being published from the algorithmic in innovation point of view in machine learning and deep learning and their applications of course when i say applications they are not confined to uh, to only deep learning or machine learning that they can be applied to let's say natural language processing or text processing signal processing or maybe speech processing or what right but of course these core benchmarks will be used for different applications uh, including the computer vision also that that uh, that application that we just saw as Uh, let's say in self driving cars or or uh, amazon go or uh, different other applications so these algorithmic evolution innovations are uh, happening along with the more and more availability of data and nowadays we have abundance of data and and in terms of uh, learning the more data you have intuitively your learning will be uh, better so uh, so the amount of compute or or computation you need to do to train these algorithms are also getting uh, uh, more or more because you have more or more data and you have to compute or you have to process those data uh, into the systems that 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 is available at your disposal but uh, but of course uh, the the amount increases and the compute Uh, intensity also will increase right 
So now with these uh, uh, factors of advancement of AI, it is uh, necessary to understand the computation complexity of, of AI algorithms, right? So this paper was published last year uh, uh, in, in uh, archive preprint, as you can see here. And of course, uh, you will uh, get to learn a lot about these neural network algorithms, with basics and, and different algorithmic innovations, as well as different systems that are available to process them. Uh, this is a good read. So in the reference, I will uh, give a link to this paper. But if you see this graph, this graph shows a very uh, like uh, summarized way of uh, representing these algorithms in terms of their computational complexity, right? So if you see the x-axis, x-axis in this graph represents what the top five error. Now, what is top five error? Top five error is that these algorithms are supposed to learn something, and depending on their learned uh, parameters or uh, whatever they have learned for, so basically uh, the parameters that we call them, or the model itself, they will produ produce uh, different possibilities for your output. Let's say one classification plot. Okay. So these algorithms that you are seeing here, like efficient net, dense net, base net, and all these uh, different DNN uh, or, or specifically CNN networks or convolutional neural networks, they are supposed to provide you the classification of uh, one data set called ImageNet. Okay. Now, what kind of possibilities they are producing, whether that represents the true class or not, so that is uh, the measure of the error percentage. And top five error is if your guess, top five guess of these algorithms lie in that uh, uh, your, your, your true class of this, this particular image or, or video that you are trying to classify, if they uh, lie on their, uh, their top five guesses, then how much percentage of time they can guess that? So that is the measure of this top five. So that means if you want to increase the accuracy, so this is basically then the graph showing the accuracy versus the number of operations need to be processed for these uh, benchmarks. And these number of operations, you can see in the y-axis as represented as uh, COPs or giga operations per second. You can see that in many places, they are also referred to as uh, giga flops. So floating point operations also uh, the same as GOPs because uh, all the computations will be uh, in these benchmarks will be mostly uh, uh, for floating point arithmetic, right? So now you have top five error. You want to increase the uh, accuracy of these benchmarks, and you need to also increase the number of computations that you need to do uh, for these uh, benchmarks to get uh, more accurate. Now this blue line you can see here is the the accuracy measure, right? Uh, the it is linear. So if you want to get linear uh, increase in the accuracy, the computations you can see the involvement of the of the computations get get exponentially increased. Okay? And this is the factor you need to understand before going into implementation of these algorithms that you will see in in the subsequent classes, right? So now this is one fact or one takeaway from this slide. You will remember that. Uh, to increase or to get linear uh, accuracy, you need to increase the computations uh, exponentially, right? Now, uh, we'll look into uh, the computing systems that are available and we will try to relate what kind of computing systems will be more suited for this kind of uh, uh, computational uh, density or computational complexity that are being incurred by this uh, AI benchmarks, right? So of course, traditional computing systems, as you know, that we have computation engine, and then we have memory. Uh, we have memory system, different levels uh, or hierarchy of memory is there that we'll see in the next slide. And you have the communication unit. Now, if your uh, memory is on chip, then you have on chip interconnect. And if your memory is staying outside, like 
dynamic memory like like DRAM or or your storage system. So these are uh, often uh, housed outside of the chip, and and then you need off chip interconnect to uh, get access to these memories, right? And if you see the hierarchy of of the entire uh, memory system in the in the modern computing system, you have the register file at the lowest end, and then you have different levels of caches, and L1, L2, L3, uh, and then you have your main memory, which is your RAM, dynamic RAM, and then you have the swap disk to uh, interchangeably uh, 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 interchange programs between the swap disk and your main memory, depending on the locality or, or uh, availability of the program, right? And that that is mostly automated and and uh, uh, controlled by demand paging. So most of these concepts also we will see in the subsequent class in system software. But uh, the most important thing in this slide to look at that the speed of memory accesses. Now if you see in the register files, the memory access speed is highest. Then you have L1 cache in, in the range of nanoseconds. Then you have uh, many nanoseconds in L2 cache, then uh, some more nanoseconds in L3 cache, and few hundred nanoseconds in, in uh, your main memory access, so DRAM access. And then you have tens of microseconds to milliseconds in the access of swap memory or swap disk. Now in the modern systems, of course, your swap disk is extendable to your remote storage uh, through uh, different gateways that you can increase and you can have several TBs, even petabytes of swap disks available. But just to look at uh, the local system then that, that you can have, uh, the sizes vary from words to KBs to uh, several MBs in the last level of cache and then several GBs in your dynamic uh, memory or dynamic RAM, right? Now, why this hierarchy is necessary? Because if you see uh, the L1 level of cache, uh, this, this gives you a very faster access to the, to the computing unit because the computations are much more faster and you need the data available to the computation unit much more faster than the dynamic RAM because dynamic RAM, you can see the access is higher, right? The access time is high, so uh, the lower level you go, uh, the the access time will increase. Uh, uh, the performance of access time will increase. That means uh, you will get access in less time. And if you go in the upper level, the uh, the performance will degrade. And also, you can see that it can house larger size. Okay, so the sizes also you can see. Now, why this is important? This is important because the computation unit now see that uh, that uh, it has now uh, that uh, illusion of high or or several level of memory is giving you like high uh, volume, okay? so larger space. So this illusion of larger space with very short access time. Is giving you this hierarchy. Okay, so this is why this hierarchy is important. Now, why it is important from uh, from AI uh, computation or AI benchmarks point of view? Because from AI benchmarks, we have seen that uh, we need uh, we need a lot of data to be accessed for training these benchmarks, right? And when we talk about data, memory is the first thing it will come into mind, right? Because uh, Memory is where you will store the data. So what modern systems are doing is that, because if you see that access times will be very low for this L1 level of cache, then you 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 keep it the closest to your computing unit, that, that your processor or core, and then you keep your uh, L1, L2 cache, then you keep L3 cache, and you can keep your main memory or DRAM and swap disk object. And that is what uh, actually happening nowadays. And, and as I was mentioning that the benchmarks are bottlenecked by the data access. The AI algorithms are extremely data hungry. 
if you can see that uh, how much data computation it needs per second right we have seen the the graph before so so for these uh, uh, memory accesses another key factor is the energy consumption so size the access time that we have seen in the previous slide now from the point of view of energy consumption this memory hierarchy is also important because the more energy you will uh, you will spend uh, accessing memory, the more uh, 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 heat you will generate, and and you need a more cooling system to uh, to employ or deploy for, to cool your systems, and and uh, it, it it is uh, much more uh, cost intensive than generating one system or, or chip, right? So that is why energy consumption is a key limiter of this data movement and data movement is itself is energy uh, hungry because if you see this graph of uh, of the the uh, data access energy consumption versus data computation so basically these uh, in x axis you will see that uh, uh, these are the different operations. So, uh, of course, EI benchmarks or DNN benchmarks are widely dominated by addition, multiplication, and multiply accumulate. So, so addition and multiplication operations, uh, energy consumption, you can see here, and DRAM access and SRAM access. So, SRAM is static RAM, which is uh, uh, which technology is uh, mostly employed in the uh, in the caches. And for RAMs, your DRAMs, uh, you can see DRAM access and SRAM access. The uh, the the energies uh, uh, energy consumption is much higher. And if you go into DRAM, it is uh, even several orders of magnitude higher than the computation itself. And if you just compare with add operation, this DRAM access needs almost uh, 6,400 times of uh, energy uh, to to access this DRAM, right? So SRAMs are or cache-based memory that are on chip because uh, they give you very uh, short access time that we have seen in the previous slide. And now you can see here SRAM is also uh, giving you much more energy efficiency in terms of memory accesses, and DRAM is giving you much more uh, energy consumption, right? Now, what needs, this is the frame that you can see here, but what needs to be done? So modern memory systems, what they do is that, so they employ the L2 caches, the L1 caches inside the core itself. So in, in these cores that you are seeing here, core zero, core one, core two, core three. So this is uh, the, the core that, that is available. And inside these cores, you have L, L1 cache. Uh, it is not particularly visible here, but L2 cache, you can see prominently, uh, L2 cache, uh, level cache, you can see on chip. And then it has shared L3 level of cache on chip. And DRAM is a kind of off chip because you need higher memory density and it needs to deploy much uh, larger space of memory. Okay. Now, uh, if you see from the uh, AI computation point of view, I will just give you one example of how much memory that are deployed inside the chip itself to get uh, uh, a larger memory bandwidth for the uh, for running the AI benchmarks. So this chip uh, or this proposal was published in the year of 2019, and this is Cerebras wafer scale engine. So basically, this whole chip is basically one wafer itself. And all the other chips that you see are basically uh, separate. Uh, in, in one wafer, you will have several or several number of chips. But this is a wafer scale engine. Uh, and this is one ML uh, compute engine. Basically, it has a lot of multiply and accumulate unit stored as uh, or uh, arranged as an array of uh, processing engines. And these uh, have uh, this uh, particular engine has 400,000 of this kind of cores. Okay, and on chip memory it has around 18 GB of on chip memory. And this, uh, if you compare the size of this chip compared to the GPU that are available, so 
So the largest GPU that is available nowadays is uh, NVIDIA's Ampere uh, A100 uh, GPU. And that has around uh, 54.2 billion transistors. And this particular uh, WAC or Seri Plus WAC is having 1.2 trillion of transistors. So you can imagine that how much bigger it is in size and as well as to, uh, to accelerate, to, to accommodate all the computations that needed for different uh, AI benchmarks that you have seen before, uh, it, it employs 18 GB of on-chip memory and that gives it nine petabytes per second memory band. So nine petabytes per second data that you can access. Of course, this is uh, full precision uh, data that we are talking about. Now, uh, one next generation of this uh, wafer scale engine was published in 2021, and that has uh, 850, 100,000 uh, cores, and that can deploy uh, uh, 40 GB of on-chip memory and having uh, 20 petabytes per second of memory band. So you can imagine how much uh, memory it, it is uh, employed. Okay. So just to have this shorter access time, and uh, reduced energy and and so all these things we have seen in the previous slide right? but of course these are very highly specific uh, uh, ml accelerators or, or ml compute engine or ai engine uh, must we will see much more generalized uh, systems that are available and, and mainstream devices that are available so that is uh, that brings us to the uh, section where we will talk about these specialized computation engines. Uh, 